And good evening, everybody, and welcome to the sixth edition of the John Gallagher Coaches Show. My name is Jeff Dooley, the voice of the Hartford Hawks, and joining us, Hawks 50-year head coach, John Gallagher. And Hartford uh, men have the bye this weekend, and they'll play next on February 10th as they'll host the UNH Wildcats at 7 o'clock. That'll be uh, Tuesday, February 10th. Hartford beat New Hampshire last month up in Durham. Well, John, let's uh, begin with your uh, leading scorer, Mark Wakama, went down with an injury. Some of the fans uh, may have seen that uh, last Saturday at uh, at uh, Rich Family Pavilion. Uh, is, there, is there an update on uh, there your is. He, it's it's a bone bruise, so um, he'll be back for uh, the New Hampshire game. Uh, on uh, we're expecting him back on Tuesday night. Uh, it's Tuesday night, right? It is. Yes. Uh, Tuesday night. Uh, you know the dates run wild with me right now, <laughs> but um, we're really excited about getting him back, and um, you know I'm, I'm so excited about this next month. John, how scary was it for you as the head coach uh, when he goes down with the injury? Well, you know, you just, in your mind, you don't know where, for him, where, you know, if he's out for the year, right. what, you, 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 you go into places where you really shouldn't. Uh, so we're going to get him back, and he's going to be ready to go. He's going to have a great next month. Well, it seemed like he got banged up a little bit earlier in the game, came out, and then when he got back in is when he injured the knee, I guess. Yeah, he, it was on a play where, you know, if you watched it, he, he didn't even um, bang somebody. It was just he went down. So that's the scary thing. All right, well, the Hawks going through a little bit of a tough patch right now, and I want to ask you some of the things that you're seeing, John, in the game film. Well, first thing is, which I really like, is um, we're getting great shots. So... There's possessions in games where we're going to make these shots. Because you have good uh, shooters. Yeah, it's going to come. And we're not shooting great at home, which is puzzling because we always usually shoot good at home. We're shooting probably, I guess, 10, 10, it's per amazing. 10 percentage points higher on the road. Have you ever seen that before? Never. Because you I, practice in the home gym. I mean, obviously yeah, the guys are there all the time. It's just one of those strange things that uh, you just scratch your head, right? Yeah, I mean, we're shooting much better on the road, which is an ironic thing. So, you know, I think... Here's the reality. You know, we're staring at the, the first time in school history of three consecutive winning seasons. We got a lot of momentum around the program, a lot of excitement. Let's finish this next month off the right way. Let's. I'm going to go enjoy coaching these guys. I'm a college basketball coach that loves my players, that loves the university. Let's go enjoy this next month. And I know the guys love playing for you, talking to, to a lot of your seniors. They've been through the wars before. They went through that 0-13 start we often start. A couple of years ago, we off, uh, often refer back to. And I, I think that's going to help knowing that you've got uh, pretty good leaders in this group. It's, um, you know, it, it's a special group. Um, it's a special time for our program. We've gone through a tough time, but the tough times don't last you know, that's what we talk about. Uh, tough people do. Tough. This is one of the toughest groups mentally I've ever been around. They've been through so much in their four years. That they're due. I'm telling you, we're going to hit our stride here. Uh, and, I, and I believe it like I know my name. What would you say needs to improve with this team? Well, you know, we got to change a few things. Uh, st structurally speaking, uh, you know, offensively, with uh, we got to run more sets to get the ball in the certain like we're, we put in four or five different wrinkles um to get to the rim a little bit just more. you know get to the rim get guys coming off some screens for open shots stuff in a motion offense that just happens um but it's not happening because either guys aren't guarding certain guys on the floor so when we make some subs they're scouted to a point where they're where they're they're in emotion, you read the defense. Where if you you run a set, this is what you're doing, no matter how he guards you. <laughs> and John, I'm sure you'd like to get to the free throw line a little bit more because your team is one of the better teams in the conference in free throw shooting. And I guess you do that by by going to the basket. Yeah, right? we, we we put in three or four things, get into the rim. Um, so we're gonna try that, and and uh, I'm excited about this next month, though. I really am. Well, me too, John, and it looks like 40% is that magic number. Hawks have won six of their last seven when they shoot 40% or higher. They only lost at 14th-ranked Notre Dame when you shot very well in that game against the, you know, one of the top Say teams that in again. the country. You've won six of your last seven when you shoot 40% or higher. So 40% is that magic number right now. Yeah. The only loss 
was the Notre Dame game on the road against the 14th ranked yeah. team in the country. So if you get to 40, I mean, you've, you've obviously, you're winning games. Exactly. And, I, and, you know, I think one of the things that we need to do, uh, I think if you call a little more sets, it helps your transition defense, which I think it hurt us against Vermont. But, like, Vermont game, you're down five yeah. with nine to play. You have three consecutive possessions with the ball, two open threes, okay, wide open, and, you, and they don't go down. Now they call timeout. You know, Corbin gets knocked down. It's a 50-50 call either way. Right. They hit a three. So I think, Jeff, one of the things that you have to really keep things in perspective here is this is a possession-by-possession possession game league we want to be great in those possessions to do that let's tighten up the offense let's do more calls um i don't like doing it because i think it hurts the flow of the game um you know i wish we could just go and, right. and play with that that flow that we had uh at certain times this season the holy cross game yeah you know we'll get to that we just got to get comfortable in our rhythm. Obviously, the the offense looks much better when the when the ball goes in the basket. But at three point shooting, Johnny, you're getting the looks that you want. You always talk about you love to get those naked threes. Yeah, we we do. We you know I'd say we shot thirty the other day. We were six of thirty. Was that yeah know, against Vermont? How many of those were good looks? I'd say I'd say uh, we the so you missed twenty four. Twelve of them were naked that you missed. So if you make five more. And these guys are good shooters. Well, I was going to ask you, what do you tell these kids? Just do you encourage them to just continue to shoot? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, they're, they're career forty percent three point right. shooters. So it's going to happen, right? It's <laughs> that's why we're due to have a great month. Everything's so uh, been so against us. It's got to be for us. <laughs> that's right, Sean. Well, fifty percent, uh, four and four, uh, halfway through the conference schedule. And your thoughts on uh, on the uh, the five hundred start through league play? You know, it's not where we want to be, um, but it's, you know, I, I, I always imagine being disappointed in a program that's, you know, never won three years in a row, and we're right. disappointed with the with where we are. So, and we are where we are because there's high expectations. And I think that's the exciting thing. You know, when you have high expectations, you can feel this type of disappointment. The reality is... Everything's about March in this level. So let's get ready. Let's position ourselves for a great run in March. Continue to get better every game, every practice. And, and that's what you've said going back to the November games. And, and you're right, it's going to come down to the games in March without a doubt. It's well, everything. That's right. Well, John, uh, have uh, most of the teams been kind of where you thought they would be in, in terms of uh, league play so far? Yes. I think everybody's sort of, uh, uh, you know, I, I knew Albany would be good, Stony Brook, and I even knew New. I mean, I told everybody. You knew New, New Hampshire, Hampshire yeah. yeah. I told everybody New Hampshire, so I'm not surprised at all about where this shakes out. What would you out. say is your biggest surprise, or has there been anyone that you just kind of wow? Um, you know, I think Albany being undefeated surprised me, but Jeff, to tell you the truth, they they have really good players that have been there that have a style. It's they're they're playing very well. John, talk about playing an opponent second time through. I mean, obviously there's no secrets. I guess both good and bad. They know you. You know them. I think it's time to put different wrinkles in. You know, you'll see different things okay. from us Tuesday night. Um, you know, just for the next, you know, we have an experienced group that can retain information. They're going to, we're going to throw, we're throwing, anything that's in the cabinet is coming out. You know, that old uh, grandmom sauce. <laughs> it's coming It's coming out. out. John Gallagher joining us, the sixth edition of the John Gallagher Coaches Show. And uh, does this bye weekend, John, come at a good time? The, the Hawks don't play for uh, it does for, for the weeks. Well, the I think because of, of Mark Wakama, yeah, gives uh, you a little bit chance. Exactly. To... So we're gonna, you know, we're coming off a, a win at Binghamton, and I think for us, um, the exciting thing is continue that momentum, get some rest, and. Uh, you know, we'll be ready to go. All right, much more to come on the John Gallagher Coaches Show. We'll take a break and return with much more next. This is Hartford Hawks men's basketball. Here in the talk of Connecticut. Jeff Dooley joined by Hawks freshman four, John Carroll. And, John, you, you come to Hartford from Dublin, Ireland. I want to ask you where you uh, first heard about the University of Hartford. I first heard about the university from a guy in 
Ireland named Paul Cummins. He uh, helped me come over here for college, a uh, look at colleges, and he knew Coach Gallagher because he co- uh, Coach Gallagher coached him at uh, Lafayette. So. That's where I first heard about it. Well, you look at this roster and a collection of players from all over the globe. Of course, you from Ireland, many of the teammates from Australia, and of course, the United States as well. Yeah, it's a very mixed group. Actually, we know guys from Hartford, which is pretty ironic. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we get all the um, all of the U.S., and it's good to have a few Aussies as well. Is basketball popular in Ireland? Not as popular as I'd like it, but, you know, it's on the rise, Um at the moment, and the 80s is really big, but hopefully we can get it back to that level again. Describe yourself to our listeners as a player. Um, well, I like to do a little bit of everything, you know. For a four, I shoot a little bit, and I drive to the basket. But um, I think my main thing is just scoring aside and rebounding. Well, uh, it seems like you've been in that starting lineup the last several games now. Do you love it when you hear your name called? Yeah, it's pretty good. It was one of my goals as a freshman to get in the starting lineup, and it was good to have that uh, goal accomplished. Well, now, can you tell when you're on your game, John, and you make a couple of shots early and you're feeling it, and you've also got that, that long-range jumper that you've displayed a few times this year as well? Yeah, it's good when you hit the first couple, but I'm just, uh, just trying to make it more consistent. And, um, that's what I'm trying to work on right now, you know, is after you hit the first couple, trying to hit the next few shots. How do you get consistency? Is it just going out there and shooting every day? Yeah, it's just practice and practicing games, you know. I, just, I haven't played that many college basketball games, so hopefully as I play more, I just get more consistent. What's the biggest difference, would you say, playing at the level that you played in Ireland and coming in and, and playing and, and starting now for a Division One basketball team in the America East? Um, it's just the pace of play and just the intensity. Like, you can't take any plays off. It's ever, uh, which is evident, and, you know, just everyone's a Division One basketball player, obviously, so it's just, just a higher level. So One of those better. things, I guess, if you do take a playoff, you get exposed, right? You need yeah. to make sure that you're out there for every single every single moment and live that moment. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you make a couple of mistakes, you'll be out of the game, and you don't know when you'll get back in, anyway, especially as a freshman. What would you say you enjoy the most about playing the game of basketball? Uh, just the competition of it, you know. I think it's a great game with new, like, um, brings a lot of competitors to it, and I just just want to win. I think that's the best part about it. Is there a player in the NBA that you like to watch? Yeah, there's a lot, but my favorite is uh, Dirk, probably, just for the way he plays and just uh, just how long he's been doing it. Now, can you get the NBA games in Ireland? You get some of them, but not as many, and then the time difference is a big sure. deal, so it's five hours, so you don't see that many. The Sunday games you see, though. Did you have a favorite team growing up as a kid? Yeah, I like the Celtics growing up with the big three with KG, Ryan, and um, Paul Pierce. They were my team when I was growing up. Ah, that's pretty cool, a Boston team. And, uh, you know, you're not too far away from Boston now, right? Have you had a chance to go up at all to see the Celtics? No, I haven't yet, but it's definitely on my list of, to do things. John Carroll joining us. John, when did you first start playing the game of basketball? I started playing when I was 12, uh, which is a bit late, but I've been playing a lot of other sports like rugby and soccer, but I started playing seriously when I was 12 years old. Who introduced you to the game of basketball? Um, well, it was my dad, because he used to play internationally. He played for the Irish national team, but um, he, he introduced me when I was about 12. I got a chance to meet him a couple of weeks ago. It's fun that he's made the trip from Ireland and had a chance to see you play in a couple of games. Yeah, that's good. It's always good when you get your dad to come over. You know, um, It's not that far, but... Uh, it's good that I know a lot of the Aussies don't get that opportunity, so I'm grateful for it. John, you mentioned one of your goals as a freshman was to crack that starting lineup, and you've done that. Did you have any other goals coming into your first and rookie season at Hartford? Uh, nothing set in stone. Just wanted to play my game, and I think I've been able to do that. Um, you know, obviously getting like newcomer of the year or whatever would be great, but you know, I think I've, I've succeeded so far, and hopefully we can get some team success. How has your experience at Hartford been to this point? It's been really good. Man, it's everything I've been expecting. You know, you just need to start getting some wins together. Yeah, team going through a little bit of a rough patch right now. What do you think you need to do to try and pull out of this thing? Uh, we just need to come together and mainly just get on the defensive end, just get stops, and that'll fuel our offense. Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes when we see that so often, someone will take a charge or you come up with a big defensive stop, and next thing you know, translating to points down the other side, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, 
just the defense fuels the offense, and once you get it going defensively, you know, your rhythm starts going offensively too. You know, this team is often referred to as a, certainly a senior-laden team with so many guys that have uh, stepped up at times this year, and, and you're one of the rookies getting a lot of minutes. Talk about what you've learned from the Mark Wakamas and the Yolanda Moores of this team. Well, there's just a lot of little intricacies in the offense you don't even think of. The seniors have been here four years, so they know all the ins and outs, and just little things you can do that will help you score, or, you know, on defense, your positioning. So they've been a great help, and can't imagine not having them. Next year. How great will it be to, to see if you can get this team to America's championship this year? It's going to be a challenge, but you know I think it's one we can uh, definitely definitely fulfill, and uh, I'm confident that we will. All right, well, great stuff. Appreciate the time, John, and best of luck today. Thanks. All right, that's John Carroll, the Hawks rookie, joining us. We'll be back with much more next. This is Hartford Hawks men's basketball here in the Talk of Connecticut. John Gallagher, the Hawks' fifth-year head coach, back to finish off the John Gallagher Coaches Show. Jeff Dooley with you, and... Uh, John, uh, talk about the change in the starting lineup. You had the first uh, 15 games, you used uh, one group, and uh, since you've mixed different match, and I guess it, yep. every every coach right now is kind of looking for that right match, right? We're just trying to get the right uh, synergy, right chemistry, and I think it's going to come. I really do. So, um, you know, I think starting uh, different lineups at different times, uh, it's not something I like to do. But it's something I think I had to do. So it just shakes guys up. And um, Jeff, it's like one of those things where in basketball, you're at a point where you you want everybody to be all in, and it doesn't matter who starts; it doesn't matter who finishes. And so it doesn't. It's not the biggest thing on my mind, but the rotation, who affects who. Uh, you know, if we start this kid. We can bring this guy with this guy in. That affects each other. So I don't want you to look too much in who's starting. Right. It's, it's just, who's playing. It's just, it. it's just you know, who, who can I get in good rotations? How long does it take for guys to gel with each other and learn to play with each other? I mean, you played certain, college basketball. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's certain guys are, you know, it's could be a couple months, could be one game, could be. It's different for each team. Uh, the biggest thing is, you know, you got to keep plugging away, and I think like massive change, like they, you know, uh, they did this study on how companies become better, and in the uh, there's a company that you know makes certain products, and then they moved the trash can one foot to the left, <laughs> and it made them uh, like forty percent. I was just reading this book. 40% to 50% more productive on a one thing moving over. When you correlate that to basketball, it's maybe one guy getting more minutes and the other players feeding off of his energy. So we're searching for the trash can to move foot one over to have a 45% change in you know, where we're going. That's where I think I love where we're at because we have not hit our stride. And uh, the reason I love it is I know we're going to find it. And we're going to find it, whether it's UNH, whether it is going to be found in the next month. You said something to this group uh, that I thought was tremendous the other day. You said, guys, I need the energy. I need you to give me 110%. I'll never pull you for playing hard. I'll pull you, uh, never pull you for making a mistake. But if you don't play hard, I'm going to pull you out of the game. Yeah, and I think that's something that we, we – just have to hang our hat on that. And let's just look. You know, I want guys to be free out there. I want them to play their minutes. I don't want them looking over their shoulder, which I think they have been lately. Uh, when the end of January they were. I don't want that. It's not something I want to be a coach. I don't want to coach that. I want to coach guys that are making aggressive mistakes and playing really hard. And if we could do that. We'll be fine. John, the fun thing is that you get everyone involved on the team, and you're going deep and deep into the bench now. And, I mean, just the energy that you're bringing. You've got guys uh, getting minutes that haven't gotten minutes in a while. Yeah, and I think Dougal Weir is getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And I think guys are really responding. Uh, Jamie Schneck is going to be playing a lot more. Look, we, we, we need everybody. We need the screeners. We need the shooters. We need the passers. We need, we need complete effort from every guy to bring what he can bring. Try to hide your weaknesses and show your strengths. Whatever you're, you're good at, you know, we're asking you to bring. 
That's it's sort of our motto. We talk so much about Mark Wakama, your all-conference selection, but uh, i got to ask you about Corbin Rowe because he's a guy that can sometimes change the pace of a game. He'll come up with a it always, Randy and I always talk about it. At a huge time, he always takes a charge, gets the ball back, and then sometimes comes down and hits a three. He's really been big for us. Really, uh, He's had a great, great senior year. What a career he's had. and he's. I think he's going to have a phenomenal next month. I really do. What are you looking for the seniors to get across to some of the younger kids with? The, I mean, this you know month plus they, of basketball. Life. Yeah, I think they've done it. Um, just just what we're about, how we go about our business. Uh, I think they really have uh, done a great job of uh, just explaining to them what we're about. Is it always clear? No, but for a freshman, it takes time. Corbin Rowe, you know, he, he played you know minimal minutes as a freshman, minimal. It take is a this is a long process. I think we've got two really great great freshmen, um, you know, and John and John Carroll and Jack Hobbs, and I think it's it's about growth, and that's where I'm really excited about the program. What is the uh, the biggest challenge for freshmen coming in? And, and we've seen, you know, obviously both Carroll and and Hobbs now are playing valuable minutes for your team. Time management off the floor is number one for any freshman. And then two, in practice and in games, how hard you have to play just to compete and the effort you have to bring. How about the quickness, John, in the game? It's I know it's different than practice, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, I don't think it's different from uh, when we go live in practice, but when we're doing our shooting stuff, we try to simulate it. We try mm -hmm. to – the game versus practice for us, um, I really believe – Try, we try to prepare them for the game. But here's the other reality. There are certain times where the whistle's not going to blow in a game for four minutes. You know, when you have those sure. not, no media timeouts and it goes and it goes and it goes. That's the stretch for a young kid to fight through. Because in practice, there's never a four and a half minute stretch. That's something that I'd love to do, you know, as, as we get. I wish I could do that now. We just have to coach and teach and correct. Like Larry Brown, the head coach at SMU, one of my friends was at his practice. He stops at every 15 seconds and teaches and teaches and teaches. We go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. We, we want to play. But there's, there's a lot to be said for that. Well, let's look ahead to your next opponent, New Hampshire, next uh, Tuesday, February 10th. Yep. Wildcats right now playing real well, coming up a 15-point win over Stony Brook. They also beat Vermont. Uh, tell us about Coach Herrian's group. Really shooting it well. Uh, really, you know, I think that that win at UNH for us is going to get better and better and better. I think that's a great win now. Funny you say that because you told me that after that happened. You said, Jeff, we're going to look back in this game. This is a huge road win, and the Wildcats right now have got everyone's attention in the American East. They do, and I think it was a great win. We were up ten in that game. I thought we could have. Look, we can really start playing well. We can we can really really get it going, and I think. The the strength of our team is in our young kids growing. So I think it's like when you look at our group, and I know we got UNH, and you know, they're very talented and they can score. But we're I look at this more now than I did before. We were trying to be the one seed before. We were trying. We had the wrong mindset instead of just saying, "Hey, like, like, look, let's." Let's just get this better. Let's improve this every day. And I think there's times in a program where getting the one seed is is a valuable goal. Sure. But when you're playing as many young guys as us, the viable goal is to go 3-0 and in March. And how do you do that? Well, you got to get better today and today and tomorrow and the next day. So I think there's a big stretch for us, uh, and I'm really excited about it. Wildcats have one of the rising stars in the league, Tanner Lesnar, uh, the one of the best rookies, John, a four-time rookie of the week, and he's a guy that uh, you know he he can score in a variety of ways. Really good, really can play. Uh, I tip my hat to those guys. They can, uh, you know, they they went to our state down there in Texas and they got players. Yeah, they sure <laughs> did. So well, Billy Billy did a nice job there. He's invaded Texas. It's not only Hartford now, you get the Wildcats down there as well. And we'll close things out, Coach, with, uh, you know, you, you always talk about the keys to winning. And you always say that, you know, right now it's still about us and getting better more so than what, a, what the opponent does, right? Yeah, I think it, we control our own destiny. And I think going forward, 
the one thing I want to see from this group is just our competition level. Really excited about being in the gym, competing. I think you're going to see that as these games go. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for our own group. And I, I, I could see some great things about to happen. And the energy in the, in the, uh, the arena has been terrific. I know you want all the fans of the community oh, the students to come out on Tuesday night. That's my one message is you guys have really made it a great place to come, great entertainment for uh, – I know the more people for our, our players that come, the, the better their, the energy in the building is. And as you know, Jeff – it's been a different place with you yes. fans out there. It's been great. John, appreciate it as always. Uh, best of luck, and we'll talk to you on the pregame show on Tuesday night. <clears throat> I will uh, see you then, and by the way, congratulations to your Patriots. <laughs> hey, I had nothing to do with it, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, I, I the still, big winner, I, right? I still don't know <laughs> what the slant call was. Uh, I don't know. but The Bill Belichick, <laughs> the new scandal is going to be <laughs> Belichick made the call. For the Patriots. Coach, we're out of time. You got it. <laughs> John Gallagher, terrific as always. My name is Jeff Dooley. Have a great night, everybody.